Okay, we are going to do a unit K in a two-part review. The first part is going to be the heart diagram. Uh, so if you don't have your diagram out, grab it. And we're going to walk through the diagram looking at structure function. Uh, and the second part, we'll make it in a second video, uh, will be uh, the heartbeat. So examining, talking about the SA and AV nodes and uh, blood pressure. So if you don't know the heart parts, this is the video for you. If you get the heart parts and you're ready to skedaddle on, then you want to watch the second uh, part of this review session uh, to get that. This one of the two is the more important part. Okay, let's go on heart structure and function. So you need a heart diagram. If you already haven't labeled it, then that would be an activity you need to do. We're going to start with the most confusing parts. We have two AV valves and we remember the AV valves are the valves that separate, prevent black backflow, sorry, between the atria and the ventricles. The AV valves are held shut during ventricular contraction by the chordae tendinae. So we say the function of the chordae tendinae is to prevent inversion, prevent inversion of the AV valves. And this means that the AV valves, we do not want them to flap backwards and then allow for backflow into the atria. This would not be good. The second set of valves that we need to know where they are are the semilunar valves. There's one here. This is between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. The second one we're not seeing would be between the left ventricle and the aorta. So the first semilunar valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. Some people get confused by that. So the pulmonary trunk is the beginning of the left and the right arteries. So the trunk is going to be one dividing into two because there's a right and a left lung. We remember the arteries are the only arteries that carry blood that is, hopefully we can all think it before I say it, low in oxygen. The blood is going to passage out through the lungs or to the lungs, right, pardon me, dropping off carbon dioxide, picking up oxygen, gas exchange is occurring, and then come back in to the heart through the left and the right pulmonary veins. We remind ourselves that the pulmonary veins would be the only veins in the adult body high in oxygen. And in fact, this would be the blood vessel with the highest uh, oxygen content anywhere in the body. So oftentimes a question, Right? Blood vessel with the highest oxygen content would be the pulmonary veins. We come in the pulmonary veins through the left atrium. Again, we're going out to the left ventricle and then through the second semilunar valve connecting the left ventricle to the aorta. The aorta begins up here as the aortic arch, sometimes referred to. It tucks behind the heart, so we're not seeing it, and then it would come out peekaboo on the other side. Oftentimes here, it's referred to as the descending aorta because it's going down into the abdominal cavity. Um, other than that, right, the superior and inferior vena cava drain into the right atrium from the upper and lower portions of the body. And I think that's good. Let's quickly, a uh, quick way to make sure that you know the heart parts is that you can sit down and I like to draw it as a square with four boxes in it. And I can prove to myself that I know it because I can label it up, right? If you can't do that, then you need to go back and review the heart parts until you go on to the second part of this review session. So just quickly, whoops a doozles, left atrium, left ventricle, AV valves, semilunar valves, chordae tendinae, right? These are the important parts that we must know. The septum is the wall that divides the two sides and keeps the low in oxygen blood separated from the high in oxygen blood. Okay, we're gonna stop it there.